Hello everyone, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode I'm going to take and show you all how to create some power hammer tooling to be used with the hardy hammer that I created a little while ago. Um, and also it can be used with the uh, original cam hammer and the revisited design. Uh, I'll put a tag up above me here uh, to take and you know, lead you to those links. Uh, if you want to watch those videos. Um, if you've already made those hammers, I appreciate your support and I thank you. Um, and then maybe you have a power hammer already and you didn't need, have any need in uh, building your own. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, hopefully this tooling will help you guys think a little differently, maybe about your wrists um, and kinetic energy and how it applies to our bodies. And, uh, you know, my design for this uh, my, my designs on these power hammer tools, they help insulate um, your wrists and your body from kinetic energy. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to break it up in a several part series so that way I can keep the time down on it a little bit, make it a little more easy um, to, you know, sink in and watch. Uh, you know, we all live pretty busy lives, so, uh, but I hope it will be a handy to you all. And uh, just thank you for watching. Okay, everyone, we're at my handy dandy workbench here, the welding table. Uh, I figured I'd take and show you all the design right off the get go uh, that we're going for here. I think this best illustrates it, and then I'll get into the video clips of me making each element uh, and just a few quick tips of how to make each element. The handle portion, which is this and this, is essentially going to be the same in every video. So every progressive video from here, I won't re-go over these. So, uh, so if you need a refresher course, you'll have to come back to this video. Um, and I will link the other videos in this series back to this original video. So um, hopefully that will be a resource to you guys. This is going to be the struck in, or this will be the part that will go under the power hammer. This can take many forms. These can be fullers, these can be butchers, these can be set down tools. Um, any number of wildly imaginative tooling that you can get into. We're going to do uh, several different things. Uh, some of them will be punches, some of them will be fullers, some of them will be uh, hot cuts and butchers and all sorts of different crazy tooling here. Um, but uh, just to kind of get you guys to thinking. But the main thing that I want to focus on is right here. This handle. Um, the reason why this is designed the way it is, and if you notice, this looks like a spring. A really crappy spring, but it looks like a spring. I want you to take, I want you to take note of that. Um, when we use a power hammer and it's striking our tooling, all that kinetic energy that's coming down on that tool has got to go somewhere. There's a percentage of it that works into your work piece. But then there's also a percentage of it that goes to the left and the right. Because, as with anything, it likes to, like water or electricity, it likes to travel the path of least resistance. That's all energy. So, that energy that you're applying, that mechanical force and kinetic energy that's applying down on this surface here, only so much of it can be put into the piece and there's a certain amount that's absorbed into the actual tool itself. Well, as soon as you put a handle on that tool, you are exposing your body to the kinetic energy that is on the working end of the tool. Um, I say I'm not going to be long-winded, but hey, that's how I am. And you guys that are subscribed to me, uh, you must like it. Maybe you don't, um, but I try to be as thorough an explanation as I can. So I really hope you guys get this, uh, you know, these core principles that I'm trying to lay out here for you. Uh, it'll help you out a lot. So in this design, there is a spring in here. This spring isn't so it can flex all about and do whatever. This spring is to eat up the shock or the kinetic energy before it gets to the handle end. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, 
it, don't attribute this design to me a whole lot. Um, I have seen um, part of the blacksmithing organization that I'm a part of, uh, SOFA or Southern Ohio Forge and Anvil. Um, they had a like a butcher, like a like a hot cut butcher of some sort to be used under the power hammer, and a guy designed it with this spring. Well, he did real good with that ideal, but then he put a solid handle here. And what that does for you is it still exposes your body. It's like having a solid piece still. It eats up a little bit of the shock, but not all. So how are we going to eat up most of the shock? Well, quite simply put, we need a barrier between our hands and the metal rod because steel is a great transfer of kinetic energy. So, when this hits, when your kinetic energy hits here, it flows into your spring part and gets reduced. Almost acts as like a resistor in an electrical circuit. Then it flows into your handle. You can eliminate almost all the kinetic energy. Almost all. You're always going to get a little. But you can really reduce the amount of kinetic energy you get by making your handle out of material that does not resonate kinetic energy as well as steel. So this is going to be a multi-part construction. This here is going to be a wooden handle. It is the same reason why hammers, which I will do a whole video on this, have wooden hammer handles. It's why we don't hold them like clubs and beat our steel with it. It's the reason why hammers have long handles. So we don't hold it up here where we are posing our body at risk with all the shock and kinetic energy from the piece we are working. So hopefully this will kind of get you guys thinking in that lines. Uh, I know there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of commentary left and right about where to hold a hammer and all that business. I won't get into that because I don't think it's debatable. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we are going to apply my train of logic about kinetic energy and how it impacts your body because it hurts eventually, guys. And I hope you guys will take that into consideration um, when you're designing tooling yourself and your approach methods to your work. So we're going to insulate our hands with a wooden handle and then this is illustrating the rod of steel going all the way through that handle. And so this wooden handle essentially floats on that rod of steel, further insulating, once again, your hand from the kinetic energy. Uh, guys that suffer from tendonitis, um, you know, and you can't swing a hammer as hard as you used to or you wanted to, uh, or carpal tunnel, um, you will notice an instant benefit with an op with a um, a setup like this. Uh, also, wearing a gloved hand or creating a padding around this even further insulates you from that shock, and your wrist so thank you. So, anyways, no, this is getting long. There's the theory of it. Uh, if you want to shorten the whole thing up, if you get the idea, you can obviously skip to the end of the video and see the final product. Um, but we're going to start creating each piece. And mainly what we're going to focus on today is the handle. And then in successive videos, we'll focus on shaping each and individual piece of tooling. So, thank you all for watching today, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, everyone, here we are at the vise. So, I've created a little piece of tooling here. I'm gonna pull it, turn it, just so you can see what it is. It's a very simple piece. It's just a piece of half inch rod. Um, if you are making bigger power hammer tooling, you will have to use a lot larger stock sizes and just adjust these measurements as you see fit. But I am making the power hammer tooling essentially, here we go. We're essentially making this to start with, and this was done cold using this tool. So what we're going to be doing is, is well, essentially I drilled an eighth inch hole. This is an eighth inch rod. I drilled an eighth inch hole, and then I cut it with a uh, with, with an angle grinder. 
Let's see if you guys can see that there. Cut it with an angle grinder down to meet that hole and then cleaned it out a little bit with a file. That allows this to slip right in here like so and then you can start bending your coil like so. So you'll just have to have a good vise for this. Um, uh, you'll just have to have a good vise and just a little bit of hand strength to get this coiling. I do this hot. Um, I'll do the next stage hot, but for this stage here, I like to do it cold. Um, that way I can get everything very regulated without a bunch of stuff bending around and going goofy on me. Um, so the first step is, is the rods that we are using, they're eighth inch by 16 inches long. And we're going to leave about two and a half inches, give or take, there, of stick out the other end. Um, what that will do is that will actually attach to the piece of tooling that you're using. Let me try to focus this here a little bit for you guys. Sorry. There we go. That will actually leave out a little bit of stick out for your um, power hammer tooling to adjust to. Now you're going to notice something happen here in just a second. About once I get all around here, this thing is going to want to roll when I start tightening up this loop. I'm kind of resisting it right now. I'm kind of resisting the. It wants to roll that away and roll out of the actual jig itself. You just have to take your time with it, get rebid on it, and I'll go over the anvil and show you what we're going to do there. But then just keep pushing this eighth inch mild steel rod cold right on around. So right now we are at, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we did one full wrap. We're working on our second full wrap. And about this time, I start looking. I start looking about where I want my handle to be and about how long I want my handle to be. Uh, you don't have to do a bunch of coils. The more coils you can do on this will give you better insulation. But I don't want the tooling to become too long myself. So I'm probably going to stop it there, I think. And that looks pretty close to what that other one does, essentially. I think I actually might have had one more wrap on that, I'm not sure. Uh, I might have had one more wrap on that. No, it's definitely that. So anyways, so now you'll notice, so now it doesn't want to come off. All you have to do is uncoil it a little bit and off the jig it'll come here. I just keep working it off the jig. It's not not the handiest thing, but you can get it off of there. So, now you can see that little bit of goofiness. We'll go to the anvil and we'll straighten up that bundle a little bit. And we'll do all of our pieces for our handles this way. Um, simple tooling, but effective. The next step after this, we'll actually heat this up either with a forge or a torch. We'll heat up this bundle and straighten it out and pull it out like a coil spring. And so the next shot, uh, I'll go ahead and do the, all three of these this way. I'll go uh, because I got three different styles of tooling I'm going to be showing in later videos. Uh, I'll go ahead and do all my handles up this way, and then the next clip here I will actually pull this out into spring so you can see what that looks like. Alrighty, folks, we're here at the vise. So all we're going to do is you're going to heat up this. You've got a forge. You want to try to localize your heat on your coil itself. But this is going to go pretty simple, actually. I'm going to use a pair of scrolling tongs. If you don't have these, just any sort of tongs that will fit through these loops will work. So, just keep that in mind. But the first thing we're going to need to do is to give this thing a bit of a 90 degree bend. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Hopefully you guys can see this in the video. Yeah, That's not nearly as hot as you might think it is. It's getting there, but the camera makes it look a little hotter than what it is. So, okay. I'll localize some heat here. We're going to just give it a 90 degree bend, just like so. Okay. And we're going to let that cool a bit. That first bend cool down just a little bit, so that way it's not moving around on us. Okay. 
So there it goes. Now we're going to heat up this other little bit here. If you're doing this at home in your home forge, you can always take and uh, cool off the sections you don't want to move with a little bit of water. So there we go. We'll just bend that out straight. So that's essentially the process there for getting that more straightened up. So now the next step, you want to take and heat the entire piece up. Get all the coils nice and even. Nice, good, even heat on everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to grip a hold of this end that's sticking out, or the tooling end, and we're going to give it a pull. Give it just a pull until it looks about right. Just like so. And there you go. That's how you make a coil or a spring. So this here, um, it's a little wider back here. If you want to tighten that up, all you got to do is just give it a little curl. Just stick your tongs in it and just give it a little bit of a twist. Almost like you're twisting the piece a little bit. And that will tighten up the coils a little more and be good to go. Um, important thing to note here, even though this is mild steel, you do not want to quench this because you do not want to lock in enlarged grain growth on the mild steel. Reason for that being is this will act less like a spring, which is our intended effect. And if it acts like less of a spring, well, just like I said, will ruin our effect, our intended effect. So we want this to cool naturally and slowly somewhere. Go on and work on all your other pieces. So this here is step one of these handles. So this is step one. This is going to be the actual shank of the handle. The tooling will be put and welded onto this end here. The end closest to me here, or the, the end that you left out by two and a half inches. And then the other end is going to that's locked in the vise is going to accept our handle. So uh, if you got any wonkiness with this and it looks weird, you can take a leather mallet and go to the anvil or go to a wood block and just tap around on it a bit to just tighten things up. But don't quench it. That's very important. It kills it. It won't be a spring anymore. This is not spring steel. It's just mild steel. But it will insulate. Being coiled like this, it will insulate enough of the shock away from your hands uh, uh, without it deforming around to be pretty darn effective. So, all right. Well, I'll do these other three here, and I'll get back with you. Um, and we'll be working on the actual handle portion. All right, here we are back at the table. So I'm going to show you how this uh, handle goes together real quick. Essentially, I took a, I believe this is a one inch dowel rod, which you can buy at most hardware stores, obviously. And I drilled an eighth inch hole in it. If you're using quarter inch rod, you drill a quarter inch hole. Uh, this piece here is three inches long. Let me see if I can get a, a measuring stick in here. Yep, there it is. So you can see this piece here is three inches long by about an inch in diameter. Um, the other thing you'll need is two eighth inch washers or close to them. Just like so. Um, the way we're going to assemble this is, is you're going to put one washer up onto the shank. You'll put the handle on there. Okay. And then we're going to adjust this to where that's just sticking out. Just a little bit. And then put on the other washer. And that's how essentially that's going to get assembled. So what I'll do next is, is I'll be back. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to put a tack weld on this washer. And then we're going to put a tack weld on this washer. And then that'll finish out our handle. I'll come back when I got all the handles done here and I'll show you how that how that actually looks um, but uh, you know it's pretty much coming together right there and then in the next video um, instead of breaking up in several videos I will I will actually show the tooling ends themselves I'll just do it all in one video and um, you know it'll be just a little longer but you guys will get mainly the concept um, so I'll, I'll come back after I get these tack welded up. 
Uh, don't worry about the wood burning or charring a little bit. Just dip it in water after you're done um, and you're good to go. It's a tool. It's not meant to be a real longevity type tool. You know, you use it, you consume it, and then make you another one if you need to. So, I'll be right back. Alright, here we are. Everything is tack welded up. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's in frame. Um, something like that. Anyways, not really well in focus. Let me put that set down there. Okay, you can see I got that tack welded on the back side. Got it tack welded on the front side. And then there's the handle. So, I got all three of these done here. Um, one quick thing to point out. Let's see if I'm still in the thing. This is meant to be able to be semi-loose. You want it to be able to be turned and rock around. So that's the reason why we wanted it to be a floating joint. And that will loosen up as you work under the power hammer with it. Um, and this will insulate your wrist from the shock of what's going on in the power hammer. So in the next video, I will go over the actual uh, the tooling ends that we're going to be doing there. Uh, I've got three different types of tooling ends I want to show you all. And then after that video, in that video, uh, after I get through that video progression, we'll move on to actually making tongs under the party hammer. And then I will also probably shoot another video since it was very popular for my revisited cam hammer design. I'll go ahead and make a set of tongs and maybe even some Damascus under that. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, be on the lookout for the next video, and I'll try to put these in a series in a playlist. So uh, thanks for watching, God bless y'all, and we'll catch you on the next one.